Hey, kia ora, and welcome to Hamilton Elam Online. Tell you what, we're in for exciting times, and I can't wait for you to enjoy our service that we have. Let's give all glory to God. You know, with COVID-19 and the outbreak that's happening around the world, the government has put bans on gatherings of more than 100. So you know what this, what this means for us? It does not mean that church is canceled. It means that church is online. And I'll tell you what, if you're streaming for the very first time, you, what you probably realize with streaming is that, it, that this feed can reach you at different times, depending on where you are, and also depending on what devices that, that you are streaming from. If you find issues with your stream and, what, you, and what, you, what you're seeing, and maybe it's pausing quite a lot, try refreshing your feed by just, it's normally found at the top left, and just try refreshing on that button, and hopefully everything will be um, ready to go. And I also want to let you know, we've got, a, we've got a prayer team waiting to hear your prayers, so if you like pray anytime during this live feed, all you've got to do is hit the prayer button, and we've got, a, we've got somebody who will who will be um, totally praying with you confidentially there's only between you and that one person praying with you and so if you're watching back if you're watching back on this feed later on um, you can just go to a web page and request prayer and somebody will be praying with you Praise God. I'm excited. Come on, let us pray. Father God, we thank you that, you, that you are, you're a God of more than the four walls, Lord, that, that your word begins to spread throughout the world. Lord, we just pray for this COVID-19 pandemic that is reaching around the world. Pray for healing for those who, have, who are suffering through this COVID-19. And Lord, we also pray for our doctors and administrators who have to make tough decisions, Lord. We just pray, be with them. Pray for your wisdom. And Lord, we come against the spread of COVID-19. Father God, we just pray for, for, for total healing, Lord, for the our nation and our world. Lord, we give you all the glory. Father God, that the church is alive and it's online. Lord, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Why don't we have a time and uh, why don't we stand up? Where we, we you are in your location? Let's give praise to God.
Father, we thank you for who you are. And again, like Pastor Ames did, Lord God, fill our houses right now with your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Jesus, Jesus. Yes, so God, we declare this thing so.
Father God, we thank you. You are a good, good God. Father, that your love for us never stops. Father, never, it never once goes away. And I love you, Lord, that the, uh, that the way that you just keep chasing after us. Now, I do want to encourage you, those of you who are at home, listening to the stream, I really felt in my spirit that God prompted me to read the scriptures from Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And it says this, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Come on. Let's get a sense of people out there. You're struggling. You've been trying to do the good thing, right? You've been, you've, Lord, I've been trying to be good. I've been trying to do these things. I'm trying to help my family. I'm trying to help my workplace. But every time I try to do good, things don't seem to go right. And I feel God wants to encourage you this morning. It says, do not become weary in doing good. Come on. God is with you. He's for you. And he's in you. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest. You may not see it now, but I'm believing that God has something prepared for you in advance. So keep on keeping on. You know, we've got a team that wants to pray for you and with you. So I encourage you to go online, click that button right now, wherever you are, whatever you're struggling with. And we've got a team that, that is dedicated to praying for you, confidentially. So during these next few songs, wherever you are, maybe you're in a room and you're filled with, and there are people with you. I encourage you to, to lay hands on one another and begin to pray for one another. Maybe you can ask someone who's next to you, can you please pray with me? But we do have a team that's online. So please bring your prayer request. And we've got people who are waiting to pray with you, believing for you, standing with you. Come on, let's continue in time of worship. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. You hid in glory in creation. Now
breakthrough. Breakthrough, Lord. Whatever you're going through, give it unto the Lord. Breakthrough. In Galatians 5. Galatians 5 verse 1 says this. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Come on. Christ set us free. So stand firm and listen to this. And do not let yourselves. Do you hear that? Do not let yourselves. Christ has set us free. But you know what? You know what holds us back? It's not Christ. It's not anybody else. But it's ourselves. For whatever reason, we, we think maybe we're not good enough. Maybe God's forgotten about us. Or, or, or maybe we haven't done enough, enough good things. It's nothing like the Christ has set you free. Lean on Him. Lean on Him. And do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. To Father God, in the name of Jesus, we speak freedom. Lord, for whatever people are going through right now, we're struggling in our families, in our work situations, Father, in our place of education. Now, oh, Father, I want to pray for that person who feels all alone, isolated. Father, right here, right now, I just pray may they get a sense of your spirit. And I just feel, feel like God is speaking to somebody who's watching the stream. God wants you to know this. You are not alone. You're not alone. He loves you. He loves you. God never stopped loving you. The Bible says that God is love. You know what that means? God doesn't learn to love you. He already does. Because He is love. God doesn't learn love. He loves. He loves you. So Father God, thank you for setting us free. Lord, we do hear the chains falling. Let us continue to stand, for you have set us free. Lord, and may we not let ourselves again. Let ourselves not again. Pull us back into a place of slavery. Pull us back into a place of bondage. Father, we speak freedom in our families. Freedom in our workplaces. Father, freedom in our place of education. Come on. Come on. Declare it. Declare it. Let's declare it. Let's declare it. This is what we call family time. It's virtual family time. Normally here on Sundays, we're normally in church and we give up crunchies and um, you can come celebrate anything. But uh, we're doing something totally different, something totally new. So please be patient with us. Sometimes we're trying to figure out, does this work? How is this going to work? Uh, but we, we, this is what we, our family time is going to be looking like. We're going to be streaming live into people's homes. You know, if you're out there and maybe you've got a birthday or a wedding anniversary, what I want to encourage you to do is to... Um, Put it out on our chat, type it out there, say it's my birthday, my wedding anniversary, and then hopefully we can get someone, uh, somebody who can uh, let us know, and then we can uh, have a big shout out. All right, let's go to our next family. Let's have a look. All right, all right, all right. Who have we got here? I can't see the screen. Oh, 
Hello. Oh, holy, mate, we have a fully blown family here, mate. Kids everywhere. <laughs> hey, you guys are looking incredibly comfortable. I wish I was in your armchair at home, to be fair. Yeah. Nice excellent, thing. excellent. What's the, any shout outs for us? Any sort of good news? Anything been happening? Uh, yeah, so our daughter here, Lila, just took her first steps yeah. uh, this week. So, yeah. Lila, all right, all right. Well, that, 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 that's good to hear, mate. And what, what sort of brought that about? Was, you know, Lila sort of going for anything particularly, or you sort of helping her along, or what was happening? Uh, we kind of just let go of her hands and wave the sandwich in her face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the tempting uh, sandwich, eh? <laughs> <laughs> How old is Lila? How old is she? Yeah. How old is Lila? <laughs> How old is Lila, mate? Uh, nine months. Nine months. Sorry, I thought I heard Pastor Ants talking, but I thought you must have heard him as well, but obviously not. So, <laughs> so I'm just channeling Pastor Ants slightly through me at the moment, all right? Yeah, so, uh, oh, months. yeah, nine months, mate. Well, that's cranking, eh? So you'll have no more peace left in the household with another kid running around. Oh, we already got this one, so... Yeah, 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 make that too. <laughs> now you really got to keep your eyes peeled. Hey, that's fantastic. <laughs> great to patch in with you guys. Have a great Sunday, eh? Yeah, man. See you later. Hey, I uh, just want to let you know, if you are interested, maybe we could be streaming into your household, wherever you are. So I encourage you, maybe send us a message and say, hey, we'd love to to uh, to have a shout-out. Maybe you've got something you want to celebrate. Let us know, and we'll arrange something so we can stream into your house and celebrate with you, and you can celebrate with the world. Come on, um, it's really, really exciting. Obviously, this is new. You know, we thought, hey, how do we make this more interactive? If you're out there, and again, I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you, you know, if you've got a birthday, wedding anniversary, just message us, put it online, and uh, we'll make something happen. We'll put a shout out to you. Whatever it is, we want to let, we want the world know. And also, just another point, if you're streaming pauses or glitches or whatever reason, you can always refresh your page. So uh, the refresh button that's found on the top left of your browser, I guess if you look at me, is my left here? Or my left or your left? I'm not sure. But anyway, um, so just refresh your page and you'll be back on. Make sure the link is still the same. So let's look at our next family. Here we go. I'm here. Oh, Mike. How are, how are you? Doing? How are you doing? All right, Mike. Great, great that you could be with us this morning. Thank you so much. I'm in my library at the moment. You're in your library? <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Yeah, you're studying some books. Are you yeah, preaching it's next great Sunday, to connect. Hey? What an amazing day, isn't it? Can you, hopefully you can hear me okay? I can hear you loud and clearly, mate. Now, now just quickly, what's been going on? Have you got anything exciting that's been happening? Any shout-outs? Any anniversaries? Anything worthy of praise? Or, or, or you know, just lifting up? Many things, I guess, but yes, it's an interesting days we live in, but now things are going well. We had a great mm. family celebration last night where the kids came around for a family dinner, first time oh, for a little lovely. while. Mm. Back at work, I had three days, sorry, three weeks at work, and so yes. I'm back into the work mode and uh, putting on weight again after my big hike. Oh, that, that's so, good um, to hear. We're, many of us were concerned for you. It looked like you'd have to run around the shower to get wet, mate, in the early days. Yeah, no, definitely beefing up. Anyway, God is good, <laughs> and so nothing, no anniversaries or celebrations immediately, apart from celebrating life and saying God's good even in these trying times. That's awesome. Hey, thanks so much for that. Okay. Cheers, Mike. See you all, church. Well, thanks, Mike. Good bunch of people. Like I said, you know, we, we, this is what we call a virtual family time. We like to celebrate with you whatever's going on in your world. Hey, let us know. Put, put your name down in the chat and, and we can get back to you. Fantastic. So um, here, here we go. So let's go back to Elliot. Oh, oh before we get back to Elliot, I tell you what, uh, it is, um, it's something we can do. So again, um, let us know in the chat if, uh, if, you, if you would like us to come live streaming into your house. We'll be right there with you. So I tell you what, there's something we love to do. We want to celebrate with you. Here we go again. Can't hear me. I, I yes. can hear you. Yeah, there, you're I there. Brilliant, you. brilliant, mate. I, I, I could see your lips moving, and I wasn't too sure if you were just miming or what was going on there. I was waiting for the hand thing, you know. But no. <laughs> How you doing, Julius? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Um, Fan just fantastic. Here. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So there's a bit of a gathering of you there today. Is any been any sort of shout outs for the for the week or this coming week? Got any anniversaries going on? Any birthdays happening? No, actually, but um, just just happy, just happy to be. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of feedback there. 
I can hear that. Um, yeah, yeah, just um, happy to be working at the, at the house because they've given us the opportunity to work at the house. Oh, brilliant. So you're remote working at the moment. So that, that's good, isn't it, that you could do that? Yeah. Fantastic, mate. Well, down the line, I'm handing you a virtual crunchy right now. Good to see you today. All right, good to see you too. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Julius. Family time. I'll tell you what, big thank you to all the families who participated in this virtual family time. I'll tell you what, uh, I'm so glad that we can make this so interactive. We want to interact with you, okay? We've got our prayer team who are dedicated to pray for you. Anytime you need prayer, prayer requests, you can, you can just put your request in right now. We've got a team that is standing by waiting to personally pray for you, and it's totally confidential, totally confidential. And maybe if you're, if you're re-watching this cast, if you're re-watching, um, just go to our website, and um, put in your, your prayer request. We'll continue to pray with you. And remember again, if you want us to be streaming into your household, send us a line, send us a chat, and we'll, we'll be doing family time with you. Amen and amen. I'll tell you what, we're into some interesting times. And, and, and as we're about to get into the message, and it's really interesting because as I was preparing this message, we kind of, in advance, we kind of like decided what areas we're going to preach on and things like that. And, and you know what's really interesting? Is that the, today's topic? What we're going to be talking about, what has been pla- was being planned for months. What we're going to be talking about is why small groups. We had no idea that when we planned the series, that the government, because of the COVID-19, was going to ban gatherings of over 100, encouraging people to meet in smaller groups. It's, it's almost that like God had 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 foresaw what was about to happen, and then God saw in time that this is what He wanted us to speak about. Why small groups? We've, we've been doing the series here at Hamilton Elam called Why? Why church? Why does church, church exist? Why do we do what we do? Why do we have purpose? And why do we meet together? What's the purpose of that? And today we're going to be focusing on why small groups. It's, it's really interesting. It is, it is a message for this time, for this day and age. Because you know what? What's, what you've been hearing out there from the government is, is social distancing. Without there using the words people distancing, it does not mean social isolation or people isolation. Come on, just gather together. More than any time, we need to gather in small groups. We need each other. We belong to one another. When we started our series, we, we asked that question, why church? And uh, you can go back and listen to our podcast. Just, just follow the link on our webpage and listen to our previous podcast. But one of the, the first time we hear the word church mentioned in the Bible is when Peter had just declared who Jesus was. Peter realized who he was. Jesus asked, who do, people, who do you say I am? And Peter said, they said, you are the Messiah. And so Jesus answers Peter and he responded. And when he responds, it's the first time the word church appears in our Bible. And so I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 16. So Jesus is responding to Peter's declaration that you are the Messiah. And Jesus says this, I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, on this declaration... I will build my church. The first time church is mentioned in our Bibles. I will build my church and the gates of Hades, the gates of death, will not overcome it. Who's going to build the church? Jesus said that he was going to build his church. And nothing can stop it. Not COVID-19, not not death. Nothing can stop Jesus' church. So what is church? What's church all about? What does it actually mean? And sometimes we, we, we miss the meaning in our English translation. But when we look at the original Greek text that was used, the word that was used for this church in the original language is the word ecclesia. Ecclesia. Jesus said, I will build my ecclesia. So what does ecclesia mean? Ecclesia simply means this. It means people who are being called out for a specific purpose. A gathering of people. Called out by Jesus. Why? For a specific purpose. What does that mean? It means this, that you can lock the doors of a building, but you cannot lock the doors of an ecclesia. You cannot lock the door of a church because it is people. You know, when we walk around town, maybe sometimes we can see a church building. Oh, there's a church building over here. There's a church building over there. That's not what Jesus meant. Church was never meant to be a building, but church are a people called out by Jesus himself for a specific purpose. You can burn down a building, but you cannot burn down the church. The church is living. It's moving. Caught out by Jesus for a specific purpose. Not even COVID-19 can stop the church because church is alive. 
It's moving. So what is the purpose of the church? Why has Jesus called out people for a specific purpose? And, and, you, and I know you're, you're wondering that question. And you know what? Jesus gives us our purpose. Jesus gives out the reason why you have been called out, why I have been called out for a specific purpose. And this is the purpose of the church. And Jesus says this in Mark chapter 12, verse 30. And Jesus states the purpose of the church. Jesus says this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, to love your neighbor as yourself. I love what Jesus says next. He says this, there are no commandments greater than these. Did you get that? There are no commandments greater than these. This is it. These are the greatest commandments. What is it? Love God and love people. This is the purpose of the church. This is what you have been called to do, to love God, love people, regardless of color, regardless of, of, of ideologies. The you, the church, have been called to love them and to be a blessing. In fact, your devotion to God is measured by what you do for people. You've been called to love people and to love God. This is what we've been called out for such a time as this. Praise God. You know, if you're just streaming live for the very first time and you know nothing about myself, but who is this guy? I just, I'll just give you a little bit of background about me. Okay, my mother's from the Cook Islands, a beautiful island in the South Pacific, and my father is a Pakeha, Papa'a, or of European descent if you're not from New Zealand. Okay, so which means I'm the best of both worlds. If I was, a, if I was an ice cream flavor, I'll be cookies and cream. Come on, who likes cookies and cream? That's me, if I was ice cream. But praise God, you know, um, the, the, last year there was this ad that came out here in New Zealand. It, it, was, it was actually an ad that I found hilarious. It was very funny. It was about easing up on the drink. Because in this country, in New Zealand, we've got a binge drinking culture here, and it needs to change. This is why we need Jesus. Come on. And so in this ad, you know, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, I don't know what the name of this ad, but I kind of call it "Leave Your Mates at Home, Sam." If you know this ad, and this ad kind of starts with this character called Sam, and and he's and him and his friend are at rugby training. And they just finished rugby training, putting on the boots, and they're head, about to head off. And Sam turns to his friends and said, hey, what do you want me to bring to our get-together? And his friend, oh, you know, just bring the basics, but leave your mates at home. And Sam goes, mates? What mates? He goes, oh, you know, shouty Sam. You know, punchy Sam. You know, hit on everyone's missus Sam. You, you may know those people already. <laughs> You know, almost got arrested, Sam. Leave those people at home. And this ad is about all these types of personas that people can have when they drink a bit too much. But you know what's really funny? Is that you do not need to drink to have different personas. And what I mean by that is that we all wear a mask. We all have this mask. And this mask is what we hide behind. On the outside of the mask is what I want everybody to know about me and what I allow you to know. But what's behind this mask? It's something that I want you to know nothing about. And there's a whole bunch of stuff behind this mask that I do not want you to know. So hide behind it. Behind it. What? And, and we all wear masks, don't we? When we're at school or when we're at work, we have this different type of mask that we wear. This I'm the cool guy. When I'm at home, I might be the serious guy. We all have these masks and, and for different times that we hide behind it. See, I wear a mask. And what's behind my, my mask are all those places that I'm discouraged is behind that mask. It's all the places where I'm messing up. I don't want anybody to know it's behind this mask. I'm hiding behind it. It's all those places where I'm concerned. I'm hiding behind the mask. It's all those places that I'm praying about that you don't know, which is okay because you don't need to know and I'm not going to tell you. See, when we hide behind the mask, it's okay. It's okay, just as long as that I'm not the only one who knows what's going on behind this mask. There has to be people in my life, in my, in my life where I'm able to put down the mask and allow people to speak into my life who can see the blind spots. We all have blind spots. We all have areas in our life that, that, we, that we need to improve that we don't know. We need people who can speak into our life. We need a people that we can trust and love. We need the right relationships in our, in our life so we can begin to learn to take down the mask. We need this. Because 
if you're the only one that knows what's going on behind this mask, there's a problem. And you know what's funny? We all know this. We all know that we need to put down this mask and allow people to speak into our life, but we're reluctant to do this. And do you know why we're reluctant to do this? It's because we've done it in the past and we got hurt. We got hurt by people we love. We got hurt by people we trusted. So we put the mask back on and we kept it on. And we refused to, to bring down our mask because, I, because the last time I, I put my mask down, I got hurt. So I'm not going to let that happen to me ever again. I'm okay. Just me and my mask. But deep down inside, you're dying. You're dying behind this mask. If you're looking for a title, a subtitle to this message, it is this, take off the mask. Take off the mask. If you want to find freedom, take off the mask. And, and today I want to read from a passage in the Bible where, where somebody was stuck. If you ever feel stuck? You're stuck in your past hurts. You're stuck in your wound. You've been wounded by a loved one. You're stuck. And you can't move forward. Well, I'm going to read from a passage in the Bible where I believe that, that, that this character in the Bible, he's right where you are. So if, if, if you can join with me as we look in the Bible, at Genesis chapter 11, verse 27 to 28. And it reads, This is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram. I'm just going to stop there. Abram went on and God changed his name, became Abraham. And many of us know his name as Father Abraham, and he's got this great call on his life. Yeah, and some of you might know this, uh, this old song from back in the days. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I'm one of them. So are you. So let's just pray. No, oh, 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 my, my wife is looking at me now. She leads our worship, and she's saying, come on, Ants, leave the singing to me. Okay, but you, you get my point. And so this is Abram. Father Abraham. Okay, let's get back to the scripture. Okay, let's get back to the word of God. So Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran. Oh, actually, let's go back to verse 27. This is the account of Terah. Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. So Terah's got three sons. Abram, Nahor, and Haran, his three sons. Haran became the father of Lot, and that's not like lots of kids. His name was Lot. Lot. We all have our own Lot in life. Anyway, let's carry on. And Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. So here we have in this passage where Haran, the son of Terah, he dies. We don't know why he died. Could be an accident. It could have got sick. We have no idea. All we know is that he's dead. We know he's dead in this passage. And I wonder, I wonder, if the great call that was upon Abraham's life, I wonder if that call was meant to be on Terah's life. Because if you're familiar with the Bible, you're familiar with, with, with the saying that God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. But I wonder, I wonder if, it, if the original script was meant to be that God that is the God of Terah, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I wonder if the promises given to Abraham was meant for Terah. I wonder. But Terah got stuck. Have you been stuck before? So as we read on in verse 31, Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set off from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. So they pack their bags and they're out of here. They're on the way to Canaan. Canaan becomes the promised land, what we know as Israel. Okay, the land of Canaan, the land of Israel. So they're the only way from Ur to the Chaldeans. Because they were right Ur. Now they're going to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, something happened. Because what's really interesting, because on the way from Ur to Canaan, there's the city. This city just happens to have the same name as Terah's dead son, Haran. So they're on the way to Canaan, and, and they stop off in the city with the same name as Terah's son, Haran. So in order to get to where God is calling them to go, they have to go through this place. They have to go through this place. And, and we read again. And together they set up from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, 
this city this, this just happens to have the same name as Terra Sun. When they came to Iran, they settled there. But listen to this. Because where was Terra going? Terra was going to Canaan. But what happened to Terra? Terra lived 205 years. He obviously didn't have the COVID-19. He lived 205 years and he died in Haran. He died there. He was on his way to Canaan, but he got stuck. He got stuck in a relational wound. I wonder if you're stuck. If you find you're stuck in a place, you were on your way somewhere, but you got stuck because of a relational wound. That's why in the next chapter we read that God is speaking to Abraham. And he's saying to Abraham, Abraham, your dad wouldn't do it. So I want you to take your family and head to a place that I'm calling you. You can't stay in your relational wound. You can't stay in the place that hurts so badly. You need to get out of that place. You need to go to the place that I'm calling you. I wonder if there are people listening this morning and you're stuck. You settled in a relational wound. You got stuck in the call of God because as you were going, you got to a place where something hurt you and someone disappointed you. Have you ever been disappointed before? Have you ever been hurt before? We've all been hurt before. We're all the product of our past hurts failures, and all the good things as well. But what are you going to do about it? Are you going to get stuck in Iran? Are you going to be stuck in the place of your hurts? Or are you going to keep moving in the place that God is calling you to? Because here is a powerful truth. Where you settle is most often where you die. Where you settle is where, of, where you, most often is where you die. So don't settle in your marriage. Well, there's no affection in my marriage. He just doesn't understand me. She just doesn't understand me. Don't settle in your marriage because where you settle is where you die. I've seen too many marriages fail because they settled. Well, this is the way that it is. And they settled. Because where you settle is where you die. So how do we get unstuck? How do we get unstuck? How do we move out of a, out of a relational wound? How do we learn to take down the mask. Come on, it's time to take off the mask. How do we do this? What I love about the Word of God, it's powerful. And in the Bible is the answer. So if, you, if we can look at James chapter 5, verse 16. I love this verse. I really do. It's a powerful verse. James chapter 5, verse 16, found in our New Testament. It says this, Therefore, confess your sins, not to God. Okay, did you get that? Confess your sins, not to God, but to each other and pray for each other. Why? So that you may be healed. So that you may be healed in your emotional wound. Because this is what, tr what is true of every wound. A wound that is not treated will eventually kill you. Too many of us are wounded behind a mask and it's killing you. It's sapping the life out of you. Come on. Confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. Because this is what we do. We just confess to God. So why do we confess to God? We confess to God so that we can be forgiven by God. Okay? But we confess our sins to one another so that we may be healed of emotional wounds. And many of us are like this. Well, I've confessed it to God. I'm all good. I'm fine. I'm struggling in this area. I'm struggling behind my mask. I'm, I'm dying behind my mask. And so what do we do? We go, I'm, okay, God, I'm, give, I'm giving before you. I'm struggling in this area. You may feel good for a while. And quite often, the next day, you find yourself in the same place again. You go, but I gave it to God. Why am I still feeling like this? Because we belong to one another. We were meant to do life together. We're better together. We are the ecclesia. Love God. Love people. We weren't meant to be in isolation. But we were designed to be in community. And this is why we have what we call connect groups in our church. In your church, it might, it might be called small groups or life group or cell group. Maybe you're listening to the stream and, and you're not even connected to a church. I encourage you, find your local church. Get connected because you can't do this on your own. You need to surround yourself with the right people who can build you up, not tear you down and say, well, it's your own fault. You know, you're not just, you know, just, just harden up. 
you know, of the old Kiwi attitude, just harden up. She'll be right, mate, but it won't be. I know, I've been there before. Come on, we've got to get connected. This is why we have small groups. This is why we have connect groups. It's because as we journey with people, when I joined a, a small group, I've got a small group, and as I journeyed with these people, as I began to learn to trust them, as I be, as they began to believe the very best for me, I slowly learned to take my mask off, to be vulnerable before people, because they were vulnerable to me. And we prayed for one another. You know what's amazing? There were people who had gone through things that I had gone through. I had no idea. I thought I was the only one. Have you ever felt like that you're the only one going through something? Let me tell you. There's somebody in the room next to you who's going, been going through the same thing. And they can help you. This is what small groups is all about, where we learn to take off our mask. Having the right relationships around us. Surround yourself with the right people and learn to take off the mask so we can encourage one another. In fact, wherever you're sitting right now, I want you to turn to the person next to you, next to you and tell them that I need you. Come on, turn to the person next to you. I need you. I need you. If you're by yourself right now, just turn to the camera and say, I need you. That's all good. I need you. I need you. Do you know why? It's because we belong together. We belong together. It's the ecclesia. Love God, love people. We belong together. This is the ecclesia. This is the church. It's not the four walls, but it's people caught up by Jesus for a specific purpose. To love people and to love God, to journey with people, to believe the very best for people, to pick each other up because we, we were meant to do life alone because we are better together. We're better together because we belong together. That's how we find freedom. We find freedom from the areas that we're struggling in because we, when we've got this mask on, we find ourselves in captivity, in prison. We're prisoners to the mask. But when we learn to take the mask off, we find freedom from the areas that we're struggling in. Come on. That's the purpose. This is the why of a small group. This is the why of a connect group. And so that you can find freedom. We're better together. We belong to one another. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 says this. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together. Don't isolate yourself. Never neglect our meeting together, as some people do. You know, church is not about isolation. Oh, I'll just do church by myself. That is unbiblical. Because we've been called to love God, love people. Don't neglect meeting together. Come on, we, we can't meet in big groups, but we can meet in small groups. But encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. I love this, because the writer of Hebrews understood that the life that God has called us to it's more than just a good sermon. It's more than just good worship music. But it's about community. That's our vision. Real love serves. That's our vision. It is our vision that everyone is a, a, is a part of a loving community. Everyone is part of a, a loving community. Because that's where we find freedom. Real love serves. Why? Because we belong to one another. Maybe you feel that, that you don't need anybody. Maybe you feel that. I just want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. Maybe somebody else needs you. You may be thinking, well, I'm all good. So it's all good in the hood. But maybe someone else needs you. Yeah. Maybe there's someone else who is right now where you used to be. God, he came through for you by grace. Now he's calling you because this is what God has called you to do. This is, this, this, is, this is our purpose, to love God, love people. He's called you to help people get unstuck, to pray for one another. You might, need not, you might feel you don't need anybody, but maybe somebody needs you. They need you. They need you. Why? Because we belong together. We belong to one another. You know, when we first moved to Hamilton, almost 16 years ago, in fact, over 16 years ago, uh, we knew nobody. We didn't have any family members here. We're, we're isolated. We're alone. We were broken. We were broken people when we first moved here. We, we were in a bad place. Financially, we were wrecked. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Maybe you're in that place right now. But it wasn't until we got connected with a community. We found our way to Hamilton Elam Church. And I'll tell you what, what could have been the most destructive 
season in our life became the most fruitful. Because something happens when you, be, when you come in community in the way that God has called us to be, to be people who love God and love people. And you know what? Well, we, because God changed the way that we were thinking. He changed our thoughts. You might have toxic thoughts right now. But the way that God got us through this is that he surrounded us with the right people. Because too often back then, we had the wrong people speaking into our, into our life. And then we had the right people encouraging us, believing the very best for us. I wonder, maybe there are some new people that God has in mind to bring into your life. Maybe God wants to surround you with some new people who can speak life into your situation. If you're not, if you're not part of a connect group or small group, I encourage you, get connected now more than any other any time. This is the time we need to stay connected more than any other time to come and pray for one another. Learn to take off the mask because we belong to one another. Come on. We belong to one another. It's time to get connected. It's time to get unstuck. We are better together. That's why God has called you for a specific purpose. To love God, love people. Why? Because we belong to one another. Come on, let me pray for you. Wherever you are, let your heart be still. And begin to focus on God. He's with you wherever you are. He never left you. Did you know that? Father God, I pray for people listening to this stream. People who still have this mask on. Father, I pray that they, they surround themselves with the right people who believe the very best in them. Father, who, who love you. Who said, I love God and I love people. Help us learn to take off the mask and find freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I really can't end this stream without mentioning about what Jesus has done for us. Because we need to understand something. Sometimes we wear this mask because we feel we're not good enough. You ever feel like that? You feel you're not good enough? It's because of unforgiveness. We can't forgive ourselves. Or maybe we think God can't forgive you. You need to know something. God loved you so much. You can't change your past. You've tried. But it failed. No one can. This is what God did for you. That God stepped into his creation. And he, he, he binded himself with flesh. And he became the living Jesus. So that on the cross, Jesus died for your sins. Which means he's the only one that can go into those places of your greatest regrets, your greatest mistakes, and wipe the slate clean. He did this for you. That's why Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 is for Christ has set you free. But do not let yourself become burdened to the yoke of slavery. He set you free. How do you get free? Is making a decision. Lord, I'm going to follow you. I can't do this on my own. You know, I've tried to do this before I came to know Jesus. I tried to do the right things. I really did. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop disrespecting my mom. I'm going to stop disrespecting people. I'm going to stop doing all this bad stuff. You know what I find myself doing? I found myself back in the same place again. But, I'm not, but when I began to put my trust in Jesus, because Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He simply said, follow me. So if you are ready to leave your life of sin, You're ready to leave your, your life that's a mess. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God to love the messy people of the world. This is a paraphrase. God so loved the messy people, of, any messy people out there. God so loved the messy people of the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him shall never perish but have eternal life. Come on. Why don't you make a decision today? Why don't you make a decision right now to follow Jesus? It will be the best decision you'll ever make. Right now, we've, we've got on your screens, raise your hands for Jesus. And this is what I want you to do. If you're making this, this decision to follow Jesus, I encourage you, click the button. Raise your hand for Jesus. Come on. This is not my faith. This is your faith. You've got to do something about it. And when you click this button, we've got a team who's dedicated to pray for you. You are not alone. We belong to one another. 
to click this button right now. I'm making this decision. I'm following Jesus. Come on. I want to pray with you. Maybe, maybe you can pray this prayer in your heart. Maybe you're in a small group. Pray this prayer together. Okay, you're making a decision. Lord Jesus, right here, right now, I'm making a decision to leave my life of sin. I've tried to do things on my own, but I keep messing up. Right here, right now, I am making a decision to follow you, Jesus, because you know the way out. Forgive me for my sins. Set me free. Thank you for being my Lord and my Savior. I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand wherever you are, whatever location you're in. It's hard to take off the mask, set free. Praise God. Hey, church, before we close, I want to share about our vision. Some of you, are, maybe you're, you're screening for the very first time looking at our T-shirts, Real Love Serves. This is the vision of our church, that God is real in every situation of your life, wherever you are. You know, um, if you're in Hamilton, we run this called, called, uh, course called Alpha. It helps us to know God even more. I encourage you, just go to our webpage, fill in the right forms, and, and get connected. You know, get to know God. Honestly, it's the best thing, decision you'll ever make. The second part of our vision is, is love community. It's about getting to small groups, connect groups. We're better together. Learn to take off the mask and find freedom today. Second, and the third part of our, of our vision is serves purpose and calling. Come on, God has a purpose for your life. He's called you. You weren't born just to wake up, eat your lunch, or go to school, eat someone else's lunch like I used to do, go home and do it all over again the next day. Come on, God has a plan for your life that is good. Come on, this great course will help you discover your purpose and where you can begin to make a difference today. You know, uh, church, we can't do what we, uh, we can without your giving. I do thank you for giving. We've got so many generous people in our church. You know, uh, I want to let you know what, what happens to uh, all the money that comes in. It goes to our public schools. It helps kids go to camp who can't afford. Um, it goes to supporting, um, we put counselors in school, professional counselors that, that help kids and parents um, with their issues. We have something what we call the Christmas box. We, we do this every year. And, and last year, we, we, were, we put together 2,000 Christmas boxes, kind of food parcels, going to, to people in need. Come on, when you give, you're helping a family in need. And we've got missionaries overseas who's, who's, who, and is out there to support what the, the great work that they're doing. Really, honestly, we thank you for giving. If you want to give, if you want to partner with us, go to our website and partner with us. Praise God. Well, church, before we close, we're going to end with a song. I'm going to hand it over to my beautiful, amazing wife, Puro. So I'm going to hand it to you. While we stand up wherever you are, let's end with, with praise God, uh, with, our, with our praises on. Let's go. Whoa.
We're coming to the end of our live stream. I just want to mention this has been recorded so you can listen back, invite your friends and watch it all over again. We've got people joining us from Japan, uh, Konnichiwa, uh, from USA, Howdy, and Australia. G'day, mate. And so uh, thank you. God bless. Have a fantastic rest of the week. Remember, let's get, stay connected. Love people. Love God. God bless everybody.